The next step in our journey is to learn about branching. Branching allows the program to perform different instructions based on a set of conditions. And that means that our programs will start making decisions. And I know I do say this a lot, but branching is another key component of any programming language and that's not different with C Sharp. So let's see how this works in practice. I'm going to create a variable that's going to hold the user's input using the console.readLine method. So right after the menu, I'm going to be prompted to input something. Then we're going to start the branching logic. Here we have an if statement. The if statement will set the criteria for a decision to be made in our program. And this criteria or condition will be inside the parenthesis. And in this case, the criteria will be if the game selected equals the letter A. After the parenthesis, we have a pair of curly brackets. We call that a block of code. And a code block is nothing more than a set of instructions that represents a complete unit of code and that has a single purpose in our system. And code blocks are a very important concept. They are going to define what we call scopes, but we're going to explain that in detail later. So back to our criteria inside the parenthesis, we are comparing the input with the string A by using this equality operator. And that's the two equal signs. There are different equality operators that will check if something is different than the other thing or if a number is bigger or smaller than the other. And you can check all of those in the documentation link below. But what's important for us right now is that this is a Boolean expression, which means that it returns true or false. We talked about Booleans briefly before when we talked about types. And here this expression returns a value of the Boolean type. If the expression is true, the code inside this code block is going to be executed. And if it's false, the block will be ignored. And for now, this code block will be very simple. All we're going to do is print the message addition game selected. But of course, we're going to have multiple conditions in this app. Since we will have multiple types of games, one for each mathematical operation. And here I'm creating a condition for the subtraction game. But since it's not the first if statement, we use else if instead of just if. So if the first expression is true, this line is ignored. But if it's false, then this code gets evaluated. So let's create another couple of Boolean statements, one for multiplication and one for division. But we will have a final block that is just an else statement. So this one doesn't have a specific condition. It just means that if we input anything other than the previous conditions, we print this code block which is a goodbye message and closing the application. For that, we use the environment.exit method and it doesn't really matter what argument we pass to it. I'm just using the default. So let's go ahead and see if this logic is working. I'm typing my name and then I'm selecting A and I can see that the message addition game selected showed up. But in our menu, we have a selection to exit the program and that's the letter Q. So let's implement that here, an expression checking if the game selected equals Q and then we'll have the else statement for everything else. For everything else, we're going to print invalid input. So let's test it. If we run the app again and select Q, I get the goodbye message and the application closes. And of course, test the other methods to see if everything is working. So our conditional statements are working but there is one problem. If we run the app again and choose Q with a space after it, we get invalid input. And that's because the condition is very specific. We are checking for the letter Q. If there is anything other than that letter, including white spaces, none of the conditions is evaluated as true. And the block that we will execute is the last one, the one that doesn't evaluate any expressions. So let's fix that by again using the .NET class library. And we're going to use the trim method, which removes white spaces from the beginning and the end of a string, which is what our input is. So let's test to see if it works. Let's input A with a bunch of white spaces and addition game is selected. So that means that our input is getting trimmed before the evaluation. But there's another problem now. Let's try again. But this time, let's input the capital A and we get invalid input. And again, that's because the code asks specifically if the input equals a lowercase letter A. 
and for that let's use another method previously we had used to upper this time let's do the opposite and use to lower which means that the input will be transformed into lowercase so even if I type an uppercase letter it will work and that shows that you can apply multiple methods to the same variable and before we test it let's apply it to the other statements and I'm going to take the opportunity to show you another trick that Visual Studio offers if you select a variable right click and choose rename you're going to be given an option to rename all occurrences of that variable so that saves a lot of time when you want to modify multiple instances of the same thing but in this case it's not going to work since the first two instances we don't want to modify so to deal with that we can use the ctrl shift h shortcut to open the find and replace window and here i'm going to choose to replace something more specific the parentheses game selected and two equal signs so that's more specific than just the game selected variable so i'm going to replace that with the parentheses game selected dot trim dot two lower and two equal signs so that's another trick that's available in visual studio to make our lives easier so let's test one of the statements to see if it works and I'm going to choose capital D with space and it works fine the division game selected message is printed 